Welcome back to Karnana, in which we're sharing in a conversation with the officers from Renew Bahamas, the recycling site of the dump. And we've been talking about the nature of the work that they are undertaking for the benefit of the company, but also for the benefit of the country, because in this instance, we all benefit by the success of your work, because we are then reducing the the problematic areas related to the dump and also um, making use of what people disregarded as rubbish and that a lot of it still has positive use and positive value and I think a lot of people don't have a, a clue about that I don't even think they see that's garbage garbage so it's all finished and done with so I just wondered if from the perspective of householders and the way in which they treat garbage at home. Uh, what, what advice would you give to them in terms of storage of garbage at the home? I think the, the first observation is that we've been inundated um, by the public asking whether it's possible for them to, um, to do source segregation, what we refer to as where you have yeah. in, in other countries Trace. where you've got bottles, plastics, cardboard that you separate at the house. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one point to bear in mind is that because we've organized a, a part of the industry that did not previously exist mm -hmm. in, a, in a large way, there are still established waste collection companies that are completely independent from ourselves. Mm -hmm. So they do a great job in moving the waste from the house home. Let's ignore commercial, we just mm -hmm. look at households. Mm -hmm. They do a great job in terms of moving the waste from the households to our facility, mm -hmm. but we do not have control over how they collect just it. it. Mm -hmm. So that would be referred to as a vertical integration whereby we would be able to go to the household directly and say, we wished you to organize no, your waste in a certain way. We would provide bins saying, this takes cardboard, this takes plastics, etc. The, the, the one thing that I would say is that um, a process like that would take a substantial amount of years. Um, and uh, in other countries, we've noticed that um, it's almost seen as a generational change, mm -hmm. whereby you do experiments for five years. You would have it optionally the first, process. then you would have a shaming campaign if, <laughs> if, if you do it and your, and your neighbor yeah, don't, he'll get a, a red sticker on his bins, right. for example. Yeah. And thereafter, there would be a fine system. And mm -hmm. a process like that could take 10 to 15 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. the, the comfort that, that we now provide to households is that plastic bottle that you throw into your white bag or your black bag right. in your kitchen, you can now know that there is a very high probability that that bottle will actually end up in a bale going to China mm -hmm. or a reprocessor, wherever that may be. Um, because with our facility, once again, that bag will be cut open in the trommel, Trom mm -hmm. and that would go through the picking line where a picker would pick it off and put it in with the other um, bottle friends that mm -hmm. exist. So for, for households at the moment, I think um, there is probably more comfort at this time that um, the recyclable materials that they put in their garbage will be, will be recycled. Mm -hmm. That is the first point. We are working on a, on a program whereby we will <laughs> introduce a very large scale um, community recycling center where um, individuals or households that want to bring their own. Oh, I think mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's quite a, um, a, a sense of, of um, environmental assistance when you can do it yourself and you mm -hmm. can bring your own product to a, a center, and, and we do acknowledge that. So that is a project that we're working on at the moment. So mm -hmm. you would do that at the site? Uh, yeah, we, the area we're targeting is, is the entry point from, from Harold Road. So mm -hmm. people wouldn't have to drive, drive up all the no way, mm -hmm. but if, um, you know, if, if uh, households want to bring a whole lot of cardboard, they could do that right there at the bottom of Harold Road. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking at developing programs for schools um, because we find that when you talk about you know, uh, recycling, that's going to take, th that's a mindset change, like a generational change. And so if you're going to talk about you know, renewing the environment, you need to target those who are going to be responsible for renew renewing the environment, and that's the kids. So a lot of the programs that we um, develop um, with r pertaining to recycling will be specifically geared towards the kids because we ultimately know they're going to be the ones to carry it out. So even at home, you know, um, if, you know, Mike sees daddy throwing the plastic bottle in the wrong container, mm. well, daddy, you know, you made a boo-boo, you're yeah, not supposed to throw that right there, mm. you know? And so that's how we're looking at um, um, moving, pushing recycling along. But uh, it will be helpful, though, if you do put, uh, if you create on the site, uh, mechanism for householders to 
come and exercise their stewardship. Okay. And then, okay. I mean, eventually we'd hope to get it um, in the different communities yes. as well, mm -hmm. you know, so um, that way it'd be easier, you know, I can go right down the road Good. and drop off, off my recyclable goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, uh, I was saying off air yeah, that um, I was quite impressed some years ago visiting a home in Canada where the recycling was done in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Putting it in there, I think they had three different mm -hmm. containers, mm -hmm. and that was done assiduously. But it would make a lot of difference to how waste is collected Absolutely. if it's done at home. But I just, I just think it it is not only an educational thing; it's a, it's a mind changing thing for Bahamians too, because most of them just see dump as dump or garbage as garbage. Right. So mm -hmm. They don't make any differentiation. So it could help them educationally to, and to know that, and some will still be amazed to know that you could make money out of garbage. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> we, we, That's true. Yeah. We, we, we hosted a uh, recycle art program, an art program for the schools in our area just recently, <laughs> and it was amazing, um, the artwork that, you know, the kids came up yeah, with with using garbage. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think uh, we, we're definitely looking at having it on a national level next yeah, year yeah. because we did get a lot of interest from it. People were impressed um, with, with the artwork that came from it. And so our goal is to make it a national program and um, include the craft. So actually um, the schools, you know, maybe using their recycled goods mm -hmm. to make their crafts, their art and craft. And when you look at it, it's like, well, you made this out of out of garbage, you know the th the things you can do with garbage with with waste is is just endless, mm -hmm. you know. So, but it's really a, it really would become a national challenge, right? Mm -hmm. to, to so contact and associate with persons so that you could have this transformation mm -hmm. in terms of the outlook towards garbage, right. and it would have such a tremendous positive impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. Because I think you have to be especially concerned about the environmental concerns as you go about your work. Right. And I'm sure the Ministry of the Environment is taking a keen interest in what's happening now at the site. But Absolutely. I, th I think um, it's, it's what we do affects so many uh, segments. Um, obviously, environmentally, we, we aim to make a big impact. Um, Financially, um, it's it's already been beneficial to the government as well, mm -hmm. but but socially is is um, a phenomenal change okay, because mm -hmm. we're now um, creating industry specialists in a segment that did not exist on, on a large scale. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we already have some people now that we might be able to send overseas in future and say, look how it's done at a at a at a plant that is substantially mm -hmm. larger. Larger and, than and two years ago, these people never thought that they would be in the waste <laughs> industry, <laughs> for example. And there is actually pride in that now. People don't see it. I'm working at the dump. They actually have pride in what they do. Mm -hmm. um, I think previously it's it's a stigma of the dump. It's a bad place. Mm -hmm. But now suddenly, um, I mean, I'm proud to say I work there, um, because it's not the dump um, anymore. No. It is a it is a proper manufacturing facility where we look to make some great changes, and eventually to make a good profit. Eventually, <laughs> we have first we have to pay off our debt, <laughs> which is debt. rather substantial, I'm afraid. Is. But uh, the indications are, though, that you're on the right footing, though. We, we hope, and, and obviously being an operational business, there are many, many kinks to, to resolve, mm -hmm. especially when you try to establish um, an industry exporting goods in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. The market is very geared for importing mm -hmm. goods, mm -hmm. but to actually export goods, there are some snags, mm -hmm. there are some issues. Um, capacity constraints right, in terms right, of logistics. Right, right. So there are many, many things that we have to work through. We almost had to um, invent an industry from scratch, given logistical right. and um, uh, civil works constraints. Right. What about the more um, the commercial waste um, in terms of quantity? Is it extensive? There, there is, and uh, we, we've noticed a, a, a good seasonal element to that as well. Obviously, with all the building work that's been going on, there's been a lot of construction demolition waste yes. coming in. Um, th there is obviously the, the hotels um, would, would help. Um, the opening of, of projects such as Bahamar would mm -hmm. obviously um, help with um, introducing more um, plastic bottles, etc. Mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. that, that we could um, assist them with recycling with. Um, so commercial waste definitely um, do play a role. Mm -hmm. And once again, because it's such an import-heavy country, um, you do have a lot of cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything comes into Deeper, the country in a cardboard yeah, box. Mm -hmm. And a good, a good amount of that is salvageable? 
Uh, of course, yeah. Sure. Yeah, you've got various streams of cardboards and plastics, obviously, but the majority of the plastics and cardboards that come to the site is, is recyclable. Mm -hmm. However, once again, you do need a substantial volume of these streams. Do, uh, the volume makes it pay. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, and in terms of the waste from the construction sites, like, I mean, there's so much on concrete, uh, what, how do you handle that? At, at the moment, we're using it to build roads um, and to actually build berms on the side of the existing uh, landfills that we have. Mm -hmm. um, what we've noticed in the past is a lot of the landfill, um, the underground fires is on the side of an existing um, landfill face. It's very difficult to put full material on there or to put water in there. So what we're doing is we, we're building, um, we're effectively building a, a, a berm, B-E-R-M, mm -hmm which looks like the side of a pyramid almost. Mm -hmm. So it's got various little steps. You might have noticed that last yes, week right. when you were there. Mm -hmm. So then if you have a particular issue um, with a fire in the landfill, yeah, it's right. easier to get it to a certain level, yes. place full, full there, or to put water in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so construction demolition waste is very helpful for us for that. However, um, once we've done the projects that we want on the site, you can actually use that material to um, sell to local uh, builders again mm -hmm. in, the, in the process once we reprocess that. Mm -hmm. And there would be a market for that, for the builders? Um, th there would be. It depends mm -hmm. on the product that we produce, we produce in terms of size, etc. Mm -hmm. But there, there would be a, pro a market for that. And I saw uh, an area that someone pointed out would be to the north, I think, of the site, that you propose to turn into a green area. Um, how, what sort of, how difficult a task would that be? I think that, uh, it, it's very easy to get philosophical about a green area because green area in people's mind could mean different things. Mm -hmm. um, bear in mind that the majority of the area, the, the excess of 100 acres that you see, is covered in historical wastes. Mm -hmm. um, you could simply um, put a layer of full material or clay over it, yes. cap it off in a way, um, and then have it green over right. in time. Mm -hmm. You could do that. That would be a green space, effectively, but you wouldn't be able to um, build anything on that. On it. Uh -huh. You could um, do um, other alternative energy production, alternative energy production on that solar, wind, whatever the case may be, but in terms of commercial or residential development, that would probably never happen. Yeah, uh -huh. If you do a more um, sophisticated green space, you'd literally have to dig out the wastes that are there, mm. line it properly, as I described Perfect. earlier, then put the wastes back, or process it first, and then put a proper cap on top. That is obviously a very expensive exercise that the government would have to have undertake. To undertake. Um, and that would obviously be the most desirable path um, to go, but um, one has to bear in mind uh, financial constraints for a project mm -hmm. such as that. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I'm afraid we must take our final break for the evening, and then when we come back, we would look to the future. <laughs>